tuned 131, 140 horsepower, 150 foot pounds of torque. Let's get started. Bro, well, it's another hard one. We're getting something, so now the hunt is on. To get it out? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> One down, another one to go. Woo! What? Tacos. Damn! Homie. All right, homie. Up, bro? We're back with a tuned 131, 140 horsepower, 150 foot pounds of torque. To the tire? To the tire, dude. You ready to ride it? I want to rip that. All right, thing. let's go get a ramp. Let's go unload this thing. Let's go warm it up and try it out. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't lift that and film. I was trying to do just a little grab. <laughs> let's let it warm up. Let's go take it for a spin. So when I went to go get it tuned, I totally didn't bring a helmet. For some reason, like didn't think I was riding, so I was in shorts, oh, a helm, no God. helmet, no gloves. I just told them, I'm like, dude, you guys go ride it, make sure it rides good. And this will be the last time we ride this bike until like week of Born Free, yeah. which is two and a half weeks away. Do we have quite a bit of assembly to do? Welcome back to the vlog. We have to have this bike ready by the Thursday before Born Free. Harley's either gonna come pick this bike up or we are going to ride it down there. But we have to get it there by Thursday. What's scary is that this bike is gonna get taken apart down the furthest it's ever been. More than our mock-up bike. So yeah. it will go to a less of a state than that. Yeah. And in, in probably within the next hour or two, it's gonna be down to basically frame with engine and trans in it. It's kinda gnarly, like yeah. when you think about it, it's we're gonna, gonna go down as the furthest it's ever been, and then we're gonna have the least amount of time to get it all back together. We don't have all the parts. Everything is scheduled to be on time, but you never know, so. Well, before we get into that, let's go test ride this thing. Let's right. go check it out. Let's go grab some helmets and another bike. Both of them are fast machines. 111, badass. 131, light badass. One gets the maiden voyage now that it's back at the shop. XR is dead empty too. Oh, <laughs> Brother, I could definitely feel the clutch getting a little workout in. Dude, this thing is freaking fast. And it you never even let it cut loose. Wait till it, we fill this up and I get on the thing. It like, I was taking it not easy, but I, I mean, I got on it and uh, it hooks up. I didn't get on it in first gear. I was like second, third, let it yeah. hook up. Cause in first gear, it's probably gonna cut loose pretty easy. Yeah. Dude, it rips. Chill up, brother. Now right, you gotta ride it back. All right. Let me know what you think. Yeah. Straight blew my eardrums out.
stock tires, they don't do the engine justice. Cause like you could tell like all the way into third, it's kind of like slipping. Yeah. Like at the wheel. All right, Juan, let's do a little bit of Christmas present opening. On the last vlog, you guys saw that the carbon fiber BST wheels showed up. They're right here. We've been checking the uh, bolt length. We're gonna order titanium hardware for these for every single bolt that's on here. So both all the rotors and then the sprocket. You guys saw these. We had the opportunity to work on these custom one-off mid controls. Yep. Juan was like a kid in a candy store. He waited, these showed up at like 5 p.m. Yep. He waited and he was like, they're showing up, the tracking, it's gonna be. So that's the plastic one. This is the metal one. It's exactly the same. Both replica. of these have been 3D printed. Yeah, but this one's out of metal. So check that out, dude. It's crazy. It kind of looks like sand casted almost. Well, they sandblasted it. That was a part of the finish, but yeah. So I'm curious. I know you and I just on the phone were talking about like what finish you want to go with this. I really want to go take it over to the deburring guys or the, the polishing guys that we use for some of our parts. Yeah, see see what, do. what it does, if they brush it or they polish it. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I do want to see what they do. And these are fully functional. We're going to be able to ride with these. I didn't see somebody in the comments was like, it's cast properties and I think that's accurate. I think it's not a billet properties. It's yep. more of a cast and we kept that in mind And again, these are just one off for this bike if we ever do something in production might look a little different We're both right around the 150 pound weight and you know, this isn't gonna be a bike that passengers go on Right, so we are designing this around our riding style our body weight So yes, if we were to put something like this in production We may consider someone who weighs a little bit more putting a little bit more weight on their pegs for this bike Slim down bare minimum. Yeah and this is gonna be our prototype run set. So yeah. we'll see, we're gonna get feedback from it directly and we'll see where it goes. Yep. So we have a box from my good friend, Luke Leatherman at Fueling Parts. Luke sent over is Luke at Fueling has some pretty cool kits of ARP hardware kits. Nice. So we are going to dress up this engine. Full ARP hardware kits. So let's see what this one might say in the box. Let's see, does it say which one it is? So this is M8 primary and transmission. So external engine fastener for M8. The whole engine and trans and primary will be outfitted with fueling parts, ARP 12 point stainless kits, which yeah, I fit. think it's just a little details that kind of add up to a big thing. I whenever I see factory hardware, not that I hate it, but it's just nicer when they go out and above and beyond and make it look a little cleaner. Stock swing arm weighs 24 pounds. About. About yeah. 24 pounds. We can double check that when we take that bike apart. Then we can weigh this one. They're saying about a 10 pound savings, which will be great. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's open this thing up and check it out. I'm glad you got the one with the cutouts. Yeah. Because there's one that was like solid. I think the one with the cutouts lighter. is lighter. You almost have to have an opening here if it was a normal belt drive to get the belt in there. Right, wow. yeah. This is mostly to help install the belt, I, I believe. Um, yeah. The one that I did was a little different. It didn't have this. Okay. So we didn't have to worry about that to do the on and off for the belt. Yep. So if you guys remember on the last vlog, I had mentioned how Rob, our machinist, was going to do a quick turnaround, uh, make some adjustments to the tree. So if you remember, didn't allow us to drop the fork as much as we wanted. Right, because uh, we gained height with the spacer, but the drawing they gave us didn't have the spacer. It was just like an off the shelf FGR and these are custom. Although I gave us some room, which is what you see here, like half yeah. an inch. That's what I had given us to play with. It wasn't enough to compensate for the extra full spacer. So now that we got these, Rob made them. And I don't know if you can see from the front. Oh, you can definitely see. These Watch, have more of a swoop. Yeah, this is flatter. And then we shifted the material down. So we should be able to go flush with the top cap here. Yep. Um, it's gonna give us that extra 400,000 half an inch of drop. Yep. That's right. Thank you, Rob. Look what I got. Got fresh non ABS wheel bear bearings from the dealership for these wheels. One long screw. Wish you could say that. Scratch these. The coming so, out your paycheck. Holding the camera and building the bike yeah. is not an easy task. And like knowing when to hold the camera. And... Did it... Gotta set the Come camera on, down here. Hand, set the camera down over here. Yeah, there you go. Ta -da! See, that's why I took the axle out. So it sits flush. 
Are the bars tight enough? Sheesh. BST carbon wheels for both front and back, 17. Bex to run, sport bike tires. These tires right here, Pirelli, Diablo Super Corsa V3s. These are the stickiest motorcycle tires that I have ever laid my fingers on. They're, I will tell you that. Primarily track tires, but you can get some street life out of them. Not much. So that's one thing I'm excited for is to, to ride that bike with those tires on it because I could tell how much this thing was burning out first, second, third. So I'm curious if it was burning out, will the front end be picking up, especially with this front end, which is at least at minimum 10 pounds lighter. One thing to note is that these kind of tires, you do need to warm them up. So at first they're worse because they're cold, but once they get heat in them, they get become like glue. So yeah, we got the Galfer rotors all around. So Galfer wave rotors. Brambo master cylinder. We got our shorty uh, Moto Elite uh, clutch. clutch. Of course, we're gonna run our thrash and mid band bars. Six and a half pullback risers off the shelf. Custom triple trees, top and bottom to work with the FGR Olin 250 custom front end that they value and spring for us and about 150 pound rider so like pretty good for Lance or I or anybody at the shop. Brambo calipers, these things are freaking badass. Yeah, there was only one set of Brembos that was higher level than these. And that's like Moto GP. Yeah, and they're monoblock, meaning that it's not a two piece. You can see that there's a seam on these to bolt them together. They have a set that's monoblock, but they, they were like, I think like four grand a piece. Yeah. And I was like, we're not spending 15 grand on brakes. <laughs> yeah, we you know that bad. <laughs> eh. But so we went with some high end Brembos that were really, really stoked on. There also is another higher end set of forks from Olin's yes. than these FGR 250s, FGR 801s or something, Yep. but they actually weigh more. And we didn't see that there was enough that we would feel the difference in suspension to add the weight. So again, we're going for the lightest parts. Lithium battery, everyone mentioned in the comments we had bought one already, but uh, this is gonna be good to save some weight. And I got the heavy duty one, which we need the extra power for the 131, big displacement. Cool. Olin's rear shock, also valve for us, uh, 150 pound rider. So it should pair well with our front end. Cool thing you said about this is that you can adjust the height a little bit. Right, so this is an adjustment here, this jam nut, you can loosen it and extend it out. So you should be able to get, I think they said half inch to an inch more, which okay. is gonna translate more in rear wheel uh, because of the geometry. You look here, our mid controls, some custom stuff, some off the shelf stuff. These are just P54s off the shelf. This is our off the shelf soft tail brake arm, off the shelf Dyna shift arm. We're going from the Lowrider S shift arm yes. to a Dyna shift arm. Yes. The same thing that would be on our shelf for a Dyna. Can you pull up a Lowrider S one so we can show yeah. them the, the size difference? That's yeah. what would have came off the bike uh, from our shelf. From our, yeah. So this is our M8 Softail shift arm. As you can see, there is quite the difference in length. And that's roughly about what our Foot controls went back. I am curious, once we do put it together, how much different the torque it's gonna take to shift this bike. So how much different that will be we're because losing, we're losing. We're losing that much torque. I've actually ridden with this. Yep. It wasn't too bad. You definitely are gonna notice it. There's a couple of things we could do if we really wanted to, but we'll save that for later. Track dynamics, billet, swing arm, freaking rad. Dude, this whole setup right here, the Brembo, the hanger, the swing arm, holy cow, dude. Stuff I am rad. getting excited. <laughs> yeah, that's freaking rad. Fueling air P bolt kit for the engine, transmission. And this is just to remind you, there's also a lot of other cool aluminum pieces that are getting currently made. Basically the bags on both sides, probably accounts for the yeah. added. We're gonna save almost three inches on both sides of the bags, that yeah. which should make the rear end of the bike almost six inches skinnier. Yep. than a stock one while the bags still work. Yes, we're losing this much. I mean, it's not a lot considering that this whole compartment's there. We're probably gonna lose 20% of the bag. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're not designing this bike to be our ride to Sturgis bike. It's still gonna be awesome to be able to throw a couple layers in it, even go for probably one or two nights with the bags that um, come up with. I mean, I think we saved four or five pounds per bag. All of these rad parts, our tins are at paint. We have two and a half weeks to assemble this bike that we've been now working on for almost two months. This thing's gonna be a monster. There's a ton to do still. We're gonna switch it to have non ABS brakes on this bike. Hopefully by the end of this vlog, this bike is frame and an engine and we're starting to throw things on it. Let's get started. What's up, dude? Can you say hi to the camera? Say hi. 
I brought my kids, Luca and Lance, into the shop today. Come here, guys. These are Father's Day shirts. These are, if you're watching this, they're already live on the site right now. You have time to order them and have them for Father's Day, probably. Choose the right shipping. But we're gonna do a quick photo shoot with my kids, and these shirts are rad. <laughs> Comes with a matching tattoo. Matching shirt as well. So you can see here's the one but, that I'll be wearing. But the one does not have a face. No, this one's a little bit more kiddy like. Luca, Luca, Luca. And that's for the parent right there. Luca. The matching tattoo. All right. Yeah. All right, go rip it. Luca's been riding bikes without training wheels since she was two. Dad, watch out. <laughs> What the back of that is, it says Thrashin 14. 14 stands for 2014 when Thrashin was established. And uh, just kind of thought it was cool. Cool piston shirt holding the torch. Here's the dad shirt, sweet. <laughs> well, do that bro, do that bro. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Right. There it is dude, and they're gone like boom. These shirts are live right now. Grab yours for you, your husband, your wife, your kids. Rock on. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. This is the last time you guys are gonna see it with a red gas tank that everybody just can't comprehend why it looks like a pick apart bike. From now moving forward, we are taking the bike apart all the way down to the frame, engine, and trans, and we're gonna go start assembling all of these parts we just showed you guys. Something showed up just in the midst of turning the oh, camera yeah, off. We basically, you know, we made changes to the parts to accommodate the, car the carbon fiber just because those parts are handmade. Wait, we made changes to, to what pieces? To the parts that mount the carbon accessories, so the back bracket. And the front bearing stick. Okay. Uh, so we had to make updates to them to accommodate the handmade carbon pieces. So I was a little worried about them being back on time, but they finally showed up and we got plenty of time to finish them up. So that's what they are. Juan did some other pieces, but now he's gonna end up remaking this all out of aluminum and with the proper logo placements and with the proper stuff to be secure. We actually- And it's in here. New inner bag mounts. Fresh. Logo looks proper this time. We ran into some features where originally he had it connecting here and we realized the headlight needed more clearance. Uh, gusset and weld the top pieces. And you already have. have those, right? Yeah. I mean, a couple of things, right? This one's the bottom one here. So I need to um, add the gussets. That one goes there. You mean add the dimples? The dimples, yes. And then that one goes here. Check out that fit. Be like that. What so, do you think? Boom. So box it all in. This will get up here like this. Weld that up. Weld that up right there. And then we're going to continue to rivet this on. Yeah, I, I want to. One, because I went to the Long Beach Grand Prix and I saw some Formula One cars that were like this style, like older ones. But it's going to make things a little bit easier for me. Okay. And then I got these gussets for here. Also going to dimple dye them. And then we're going to go across. Sell this piece, sell this piece. And it's definitely a goal of ours. We, yeah. we want to be able to. But this is, you guys are just witnessing firsthand what we go through with the R&D process. And it requires weeks, sometimes months, sometimes we're working on a project for almost a year before we're able to actually produce it. You know, it's something that's gonna fit everyone's bike because what we find is the tolerances on these Harleys are always changing. So sometimes the measurements are just completely changing. So we have to test fit on different bikes, make it in production at a price point that people will actually pay. Because again, sometimes you can make something, it may cost, you know, really out of market to what the, the market would, would wanna even spend. We're never using this seat again. Like, we didn't even need a time lapse that. <laughs> Tins are off. So Juan and I are taking the perch clamps off for the first time ever. At first I thought there was like a plastic shim. I was like, what the heck's in there? But look, check it out. I think whoever PDI'd it knew we were getting the bike. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? You're gonna do risers and bars, take that off. I'm gonna take the exhaust off and the foot controls. And then that way we'll have more access to do the swing arm. What are these? What are these doing here? What are they for? <laughs> Where'd you put? Hey, look, look, I took off the mid control. I left the bolts in it. Right? I took off the exhaust, the bolts and the hardware are right here. Every bolt I've taken off, I know where it is. How about you? 90% of the bolt I've taken off, I know where they are. Yeah, but, but what? We don't need these. I just don't want to have oh. an extra oh. bolt laying around. So when we get done building the bike, it's going to be like, we got it all together, but I have these 16 bolts left over. But whatever.
This set of forks is heavy. I mean, they're both heavy. Seven, eight pounds lighter. Stock set of trees, 34 pounds. Here go the Olins. 25.5, so eight pounds. Eight pounds. That's better than plus eight pounds. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's one of the main things that I've been wanting to take off. I like bikes without ABS. Mm -hmm. I like my FXR, it has no ABS. So the one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, obviously we're going with Brembo brakes, but we're gonna delete the whole ABS module, which is also over here on this side of the bike. Let's do a quick comparison. Let's strip all this out and then like weigh that whole module. One, you could take this part off. There's an Allen right there though. Dude, it's got, look, it's got more Loctite you know what to do with on them. Hey, yeah, yeah, baby. Are we putting this hardware back on or now? Well, yeah, because this holds the seat. Oh. Okay. The ABS module goes in here. There it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So eventful. And my phone's saying, damn. This is Bro, it's another hard one. Oh, look, at look at that. That's called engineering. Tight. But when we put the O-lens, I would like to take that off. Hey, it's not going back on. Doing it with a wrench that big. No, you're just weak. <laughs> Pull me. You're weak. Little baby wrench. <laughs> Uh, no Ooh, Ooh, I'm excited. Hey, I'm excited to see on their website they claim 10 pounds savings. Well, here. <laughs> oh, drop the spacer. Okay, can we get the, this Should off? Should be able to twist it. Hold on. All Ooh. right. Does that feel like 24? I told you it was about 24 pounds. I think I said 23 or something like that. Okay. 24. 16.5. But oh wait, wait. This has the axle in it. That's unfair Ooh, advantage. Yeah. So it's at 16. It's popping between 16 and 16.5. So it's 16 right now. We're giving it 16 pounds. That includes the uh, axle. axle. Uh, I'll give him 10 on that. 26. Stock one's 26 pounds with axle. The track dynamics is 16 pounds with axle. Again, this is not a paid advertisement. I could pull up the invoice. We paid full price for the swinger and bought it right off of his website. Don't need this. How do we get the battery out? I'm looking for the tool you lost. No. Look, cause there's a mess here. To get it out. Whoa, what was yeah, holding it? Yeah, I got it out. All right, you wanna go do the weight test? Talk battery, 14 pounds. Anti-gravity. Oh shoot, that's 10. Dang. So that's 4.5, nine and a half pounds. That's pretty good, dude. Yeah, what was the cost on this thing? Like 300 bucks. Best bang for buck in terms of weight savings, I would say. This is heavy, dude. There it is. Front brakes, master cylinder. Not using any of that. None of this. It ABS, comes apart, one piece. I think that if anything, we could gloss this, gloss this. I think the primary could stay. Taking the horn off, brother. Oh God. I couldn't tell you the last time I actually used my horn. The gauges are gonna be so far ahead. What are you gonna be like riding down the thing and you'll be like. <laughs> This goes right here on the frame. And we do know that the fuel pump plugs into here, but we wanna see, and I'm sure you want someone watching this right now knows exactly what this does, but we wanna see what's inside of it. And then the fuel. But if we just go to the bike. Well, this one wasn't plugged into anything? Oh yeah, it's right here, there's a plug. So that goes to the bike and then that goes to the fuel. But we could just delete what we don't need. There's a hole right here in the frame. We're not using this anymore because that's where the crossbar went to hold the blinkers. So we're debating if we want to cut it off and then get it repowder coated and like do it all clean, or if we want to make like a thrashing badge. Because let's let's be honest, one. Yep. Would a race bike put a weighted badge on the front? No. <laughs> okay. And then this just. Pump. No. Boom. Look at that. It's nah. a couple pounds. A computer module for the uh, ABS. Pump. ABS. So, so we can just lay that on there to get a rough idea. Five pounds. It all adds up. Yeah. You would tell in a Formula One team you'd save them five pounds. That's like millions of dollars. I believe we're gonna get this bike a hundred pounds lighter than it started with 140 horsepower to and 150 foot pounds of torque to the tire. We're definitely cutting this off because what's gonna be cool is this whole module or plastic section was right here in the frame. Now this is all gonna look super wide open. I know the tank goes down a little bit, but from the front of the bike with this off, that's gonna be wide open. Nothing.
kind of want to mark how much we need to cut off. I'll go like, yeah. okay, I want to do that, and I want to do that. We're zeroed out here. Put that wheel on here first. Lay your flat. 37 pounds. Stock front wheel. All right, this is tire, rim, two rotors, wheel bearings, and center wheel spacer of the wheel. 23.5. So 37 to 23.5, 13 pounds. So the half. front end alone, almost 35 pounds. Off the front end. Off the front end. Super slow. Nice. Great work, team. So we have the wheels. Wheel mounting stuff is not set up here at this shop, so we can't mount them ourselves. We're gonna go to someone that does wheels, but we need to get the bearings pressed in first. And so we're gonna throw these in the freezer so that they shrink up a little bit. Hopefully they go in a little bit easier. We're not gonna try to do it right now. Oh, you know what's showing up tomorrow? All the tie bolts for this? No, just the oh. calipers. But either way, we could get front wheel mounted, the front rotors mounted, and we could start getting the front end on. Well, I mean, we need all those tie bolts. Oh, the caliper bolts. Bolts, not the rotor bolts. Ah, we could still get the front end on it. Yeah, I would like to test fit it and then we could swap out the hardware. It won't be like the final test fit. All right, see you guys in the morning. Right next to my coffee, guys. Make sure you lube out that hole real good. That's right, baby. Hold on, make sure that's pressing on the shoulder. It is. Are you sure? It is. Let me see. Look, that's pressed in. No, booger up tool. That's tight. That looks pretty good too. One down, another one to go. We should put the rotors on until after the tire, right? That way they don't risk getting damaged. Yeah, it's just less to hit. I can feel the torque that I'm getting right now. About how much foot pound? I felt it stop right there. It felt like it stopped at like 13 foot pounds. That was not a 13 foot pound. What do you think it was? Like 2.5. All right. Jake doubted us. Well. Giving me anxiety leaving that edge out like that. There you go, sir. Mark already had mentioned to me, he's totally adjusting the pressure. He wants to run a lower pressure when he clamps the wheel down. I trust this guy. He said he's been doing tires for 35 years. His dad's been here since 1980, doing motorcycle tires only. We got one sticky Diablo Super Corsa carbon fiber wheel ready to go, balanced and mounted. No marring of the carbon fiber. Mark over here at MC Tires. Thank you so much, man. No problem. Appreciate it. But I could tell he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. All right. But one thing we haven't done yet. What? Tacos. All right, it's only 522. Friday, we're in Jake's truck right now because we rode in today, so we don't even have a truck, so we had to get the wheels there in his truck. He's sitting at work right now, pissed at us because he wants to be home. He doesn't realize that we're stopping at a taco spot. I've actually wanted to try this one the whole time we started going to these taco spots because it's like right on the way home from work, but I just have never done it, so this yeah, is our first time. Friday, 522, they got the charcoal ripping. Trumpo going, it's not ready though. We're getting something, so now the hunt is on. All right, this place takes credit cards, so that's like, uh, they got internet in there, brother. All right, I admitted to Jake we were taking way too long getting tacos. And he goes, what's up, dude? You gonna get me tacos? Uh, yeah, chile rojo. Chile rojo. Got it. Adios. And he's back to the shop, right down the street. You're so worried about the tacos. You're running in. Look at these things, dude. I was hungry, bro. Oh. Hey, I forgot about that. I only got one, though. Other one's coming next week. Yeah. Chill out. That's for this I'm ST. I'm about to jack this That's wheel, bro. That's for this bro. ST, man. This is mine now. Oh, boy. What do you think? At the past store. What'd you get, Jake? He only got me two molitas? Yeah. All right. Oh, no, yeah, he got me set up. He oh, didn't okay. get me charging two molitas. That's exactly what I ordered. Uh, 
Topanga. Look at that. How's yours going, man? A little greasy and starving, so it tastes good, but five and a half. He's a tough crowd, dude. I'll say six on the tacos, but nine on the setting and the fact that we're all just chilling right here. All right, guys, there you have it. Started the week off with a tuned, complete lowrider ST, and now it is a frame with an engine. I'm happy with the progress we made this week. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff in, so uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. This next vlog after this is going to be intense. We should be able to get this whole bike built. I'm talking forks on, swing arm, wheels, new brakes, brake lines ran, the mid controls that, that we designed, the, just everything. It's gonna come together together in this next vlog. So please tune in next Tuesday at 4 p.m. PST to see some real, real progress on this beast. We will see you guys on the next one. See you later.